So recently I have seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. I may talk about this movie in its own review video, but to keep it brief, I found the movie to be an amazing superhero adventure that has stellar animation and incredibly engaging characters. I think it is one of the best animated movies of 2023, one of the best animated films to come from Paramount, and one of the all-time best Nickelodeon movies. In fact, if I did a ranking of all the projects that came from Nickelodeon movies, this movie would easily be in the top 5, unless somehow I find Hotel for Dogs and Nacho Libre to be masterpieces on rewatch. But regardless, I still adore this movie and I want to thank the team behind this movie including Seth Rogen and Jeff Rowe for bringing it to the world and adding to my excitement for the future of mainstream animation. With all that said, however, there was something that I feel needs to be talked about in a video. There was a statement from the studio's leader before the TMNT movie's release that became controversial and it does make me worried about the direction that Paramount and Nickelodeon are going in regards to animated films on the big screen. So in a Variety article about the Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon president and CEO Brian Robbins, there was a section where he talked about the feature animation plans for both studios, which unsurprisingly is centered around using Nickelodeon's popular brands like SpongeBob SquarePants, Paw Patrol, TMNT, and Avatar. But one quote he made that became really controversial was, We're not going to release an expensive original animated movie and just pray people will come. This was in reference to an animated movie from Paramount Animation called Under the Boardwalk. This movie was supposed to be released last year in July, but was removed from the release calendar in favor of the cinematic classic, Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. I'm a bad dog! <laughs> Robbins revealed that Under the Boardwalk, which is an animated musical from David Soren, the director of Turbo and Captain Underpants, was going to be released on Paramount Plus instead of theaters. This was a move they already pulled with the animated movie Rumble back in December 2021, which was also a move that Disney pulled with three Pixar films during the early days of the pandemic. In fact, Brian Robbins brought up the bad box office performances of the Pixar films that were opened in theaters afterward, which were Lightyear and Elemental, further stating, it's not about Disney and Pixar anymore. People are looking for animated movies that are irreverent and have a commitment comedic point of view. His statements have expectedly received backlash and criticism from many people on social media, including those actually in the industry such as Guillermo del Toro, Jorge Arguiterez, Christopher Miller, Shannon Tindall, and Under the Boardwalk's director David Soren. I myself made a joke about whether we would get a Barnyard 2 in the future, even though I would actually be there on opening night if that happened. So why is Paramount's leader no longer open-minded to original animated movies that open on the big screen? Some can argue that it is due to the underperforming animated movies that have been coming out lately from studios like Disney, Pixar, and recent DreamWorks with Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken. While it did have an influence on the decision, I think there's one big movie that may have hurt the studio more than you think, and that movie is none other than Wonder Park. What the chuck? <laughs> Wonder Park is a movie that I plan to talk about in a future video, but to keep my thoughts on it short, I found the movie to be a disappointing mess that wasted an excellent concept. Although Paramount did advertise this movie as much as they could like this was a movie by Illumination, the film suffered from having too large of a budget, poor reception from critics and audiences, and infamy for not having a credited director since he was fired from the movie a year before it was released. I also believe Wonder Park got hindered from looking too much like a Pixar wannabe that didn't have a personality of its own. These factors caused the film to be a box office bomb and it resulted in a team TV show that was already in the works to be very likely scrapped. Between Wonder Park's flopping and Mutant Mayhem's current success, Paramount put out a Paw Patrol film in theaters and on Paramount Plus the same day, and that one was a big hit on both the big screen and streaming. Other than that, they shoved Rumble to Paramount Plus despite being planned for theaters just like they did with the third Spongebob movie. Given the original release date, I think Rumble could have done well in cinema since it would have been the first animated family film on the big screen since Sing 2, and Disney putting Turning Red on Disney Plus could have helped the movie more before Sonic 2 became the first huge family event of the year, so that was probably a bad move by Paramount. After that, there was Pause of Fury, which was a cheap film Paramount picked up for $10 million and it was released in place of Under the Boardwalk. The issue is that the date was the worst possible date they could have given to the movie, since it was placed two weeks after the mega success of Minions The Rise of Gru, and Warner Brothers moved DC League of Super Pets to come out two weeks after it, and that one had more brand recognition and bigger Hollywood stars. Pause of Fury would have done better during the fall season, as there was nothing big for families in theaters outside of Lyle Lyle Crocodile. La, 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 la. And it would have been the only animated movie playing until Strange World in November, another bad move by Paramount. After what has happened to those movies, now Paramount seemingly doesn't want to take the risk of bringing out a new original animated movie with an expensive marketing campaign when it's much easier to put out something with a nostalgic connection like Ninja Turtles. We can only hope that Paramount does a good job marketing under the boardwalk and gives it a Blu-ray release like they have been doing with much of their streaming originals. Hopefully it actually stays on Paramount Plus as well. Also, if someone in the comments is going to ask me, what about Sherlock Gnomes? What the fertilizer? 
I didn't bring up that movie because it was a sequel to Romeo and Juliet, which was a successful animated movie released by Disney in 2011 that Paramount didn't even have involvement with. So I am not putting Sherlock Gnomes in the group of original Paramount animated movies. Got it? Okay, good. So do I think Paramount is completely giving up on creating original animated features? To be honest, I would have to say no for different reasons. Number one, there was a quote in June by the actual president of animation at both Paramount and Nickelodeon, Ramsey Nato. She was in an interview with Deadline just before a rough cut of Mutant Mayhem premiere at Annecy saying, The strength of every franchise comes from the talent behind those franchises telling those stories. Outside of the business of reinvigorating these titles, there is an art matching these titles with creators that love them, and that is the real secret sauce to the success of any franchise strategy. We are also very invested in originals and our ability to be able to launch original titles theatrically that allows us to add to our incredible library of franchise titles which is really important to creating the next franchise of the future. In fact, a day after the Robbins article was published, Ramsey Nato repeated the sentiment with variety, which means that what Robbins said about original animated movies may have just been directed at Under the Boardwalk specifically. It's important to remember that Under the Boardwalk started production way before Robbins and Nato took charge of Paramount's animation business. Maybe they felt that Under the Boardwalk was too much like a Disney or Pixar film and they would rather have more animated films in theaters that are in the style of mutant mayhem. Maybe Robbins does actually want more original animated movies and he was just trying to please investors, but we don't know for sure. Number 2. What's worth bringing up is that one animated film that's said to be in the works at Nickelodeon is Yokai Samba, a project by Leo Matsuda who directed the Inner Workings short before Moana that was originally in the works at DreamWorks Animation but was picked up by Nick. Maybe that could be Nick's potential original hit if it does come to the big screen. Also, there's another animated movie coming from Paramount after the new Paw Patrol movie which is The Tiger's Apprentice. I know it is technically not an original animated movie as it's based on a 2003 children's fantasy book of the same name and will most likely stay close to the book than Rumble did, but it is still going to be a fresh property for the company as it is not based on Transformers or any Nickelodeon show, and the source material isn't a super huge name compared to other books that became adapted like Harry Potter and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Because of this, Paramount will have to treat this movie in a similar way to how DreamWorks did with the bad guys, where most people that will see it in theaters won't know it was based on a book and they will have to focus on trying to sell it as a good standalone movie, and if it does do well without being purposefully sabotaged, <clears throat> it will show Robbins that audiences will show up to see movies that are not part of the big Paramount properties. Hope the section of the video doesn't age like bad milk. Number 3 original animated films not going to theaters anymore from Paramount and other studios would be a super disappointing thing to happen because that would just mean kids nowadays would be stuck watching the same properties that were introduced when I was a kid and before that instead of having new properties to call their own which I did have when I was a kid. Plus studios would eventually run out of properties to use and they would have to put out new stories and characters at some point. I mean Disney is running out of classic animated films to turn into live action and now they've resorted to turning some of their more recent animated films into live action plus a prequel to the realistically animated Lion King remake. <laughs> Also, Paramount itself did release new animated films into theaters that aren't based on an existing show on Nickelodeon. Those films were Jimmy Neutron, Barnyard, and Rango. All of them were gambles just because they didn't have a big built-in audience and they needed to have super good marketing to get people to see them in a theater. Jimmy Neutron did something creative by having animated shorts featuring the characters so there would be more intrigue in the movie. That's something I would like to see done more often nowadays. When these three movies came out, they did big numbers and two of them even got nominated for the Academy award for best animated feature with one of them winning it. In fact, despite Rango not being profitable in its original run, Paramount was so pleased with the movie's performance and reception that it led to the creation of its own animation division and they decided to let DreamWorks Animation go in 2012. I also want to state that I do not think Paramount is going to enter a dark age because of its focus on popular franchises, not only because of the love that Mutant Mayhem has been getting, but because that movie and the upcoming films based on properties like Transformers and Avatar feel like a new chapter for Paramount in terms of experimenting with unique animation styles. Styles. If those movies are as well received by critics and audiences as Mutant Mayhem was, then that means the studio would be in a true renaissance. After all, both Blue Sky Studios and Sony Pictures Animation technically changed the animation game through the use of popular comic characters, which we're now seeing from Paramount and Nickelodeon with Mutant Mayhem. And I will admit that there are some properties that I think would become great material for Paramount Animation to use, such as a fully animated Sonic the Hedgehog movie after the live action series is done, a comeback for Jimmy Neutron on the big screen, and another Garfield movie. Oh, 
ways. So my point is, the studio could still put out great animated movies based on beloved characters and worlds, and I also see them doing better with those movies than the period of Warner Animation Group when they were exclusively depending on their big name franchises with Scoob, Tom and Jerry, and Space Jam A New Legacy. There was a reason why they had to rebrand themselves and focus on not only their popular characters like the Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera, but also new stories and characters. What I do hope to see is that Paramount will realize that the reason why the franchise films are successful is because of the quality and not the brand itself. I mean, we are kind of seeing that with Mattel right now after Barbie's success. Most of the original animated movies that Paramount put out after Rango just weren't well received critically or resonated strongly with audiences, but if they were, I have no doubt that they would have been greatly successful. Elemental started with a low opening weekend, but it needed time to find its audience, and now it has gotten over $425 million. While that doesn't make the movie super profitable, it still shows that audiences will see original movies if they connect with them. The studios just need to have faith in them which Universal didn't have with Ruby Gilman, and the movies can't feel like they went through heavy executive meddling, which was the feeling from Wonder Park and even the ones I do enjoy like Rumble and Paws of Fury. I don't think those movies felt as original in story and style to audiences as movies that are fully IP based like Spider-Verse, Captain Underpants, and Mutant Mayhem. I also believe movies like Rango and Mutant Mayhem had more of an adult edge and appeal to them while the three movies I've talked about just didn't grab adults from their marketing. They have to try not to make their movies seem like they were only entertaining to kids. In fact, I would like to see the studio continue to release animated movies in theaters that are PG-13 and R-rated, especially because of how Sony and Illumination are going to enter that arena. But that's a whole topic for another day. Elemental also did make more money than every animated film Paramount released. So to wrap this video up, I will still be seeing films like Transformers, Avatar, Spongebob, and Smurfs, but I will also see anything original that the studio and others put out because I have a feeling it could be a new animated classic similar to the original animated classics that I have grown up with. And can all the studios please make a deal with their actors and writers already? Did you know that in the future, everything will be automated? Bruh.